Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Uh, today we will continue solving certain problems. In this particular case it's algebra and uh, we will talk about Fibonacci sequence. Well, first of all, what is Fibonacci sequence? Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of certain integer numbers, non-negative integer numbers, and uh, this sequence actually plays a significant role in many areas of um, our activity. Um, in computer science uh, it's used, it's used in financial modeling. Um, even nature is arranged in some way close to this Fibonacci sequence, like arrangement of the leaves or, or branches on the tree. They do follow certain like principle which basically corresponds to Fibonacci sequence. So it's very important actually. And uh, what's also important is, well, what is exactly Fibonacci sequence, how it's constructed and is there any formula for description of this sequence? Well, the answer is positive to all these questions and that's what will be a subject of today's lecture. Okay, Fibonacci. First of all, this lecture is part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems presented at Unisor.com. Uh, now, this course has a prerequisite which is called Mass for Teens, which is for high school, primarily high school students, maybe a little bit above this. Um, it's a challenging theoretical course uh, with, you know, theorems, uh, proofs, etc. Uh, relatively rigorous. Uh, also, on the same website, unisor.com, you can find physics for teens, um, you, you can find a course, uh, Relativity for All, and some others. Now, uh, the website is totally free, there are no advertisements, no strings attached, even sign-in is uh, optional. Okay, now, back to business. First of all, what is Fibonacci sequence and how it is uh, constructed? Well, it's constructed according to a very, very simple principle. We have two numbers, 0 and 1. And then there is a principle that every next number is a sum of the previous two. So 0 and 1, next one would be 1. 1 and 1, next one would be 2. 1 and 2 will be 3. 2 and 3 will be 5. 3 and 5 will be 8. 5 and 8, 13. 8 and 13, 21. 34, etc. So it grows. Principle is very simple, as I was saying. Fibonacci of n plus Fibonacci of n plus 1 equals to Fibonacci of n plus 2. So the next is a sum of two previous ones, where n starts with 0. 1, 2, 3, etc. So from the 0, all integer number, uh, all, all non-negative integer numbers. So if you put 0 here, f at 0 is 0, and f at 1 is 1. So this is zeros number, you have 0, and this is number, number 1. We start with 0, it's more convenient basically. And uh, for 1 you have 1, and everything else is according to this principle. Very simple, right? I mean the principle is extremely simple, two numbers, and then every next number is the sum of two previous ones. Well, now the question is, would, nice, would be nice if we can actually come up with a formula. Uh, f of n is equal to something, like a function of n. And uh, to derive this formula is the subject of this lecture. Okay? All right. So, first of all, it's not simple, and it needs certain ingenuity. But again, um, the whole course is uh, solving problems for what purpose? To develop your creativity, your ingenuity, your analytical thinking. Because obviously all these mathematical problems are very rarely occur in real life. 
in real life you have other problems but the skills which you have developed in solving mass problems will definitely be very useful in real life problems okay so that's my kind of a prep talk um, so how can we come up with a formula which would satisfy this particular um, equality formula for n well and here you have a, a leap of faith or something I don't know uh, it's kind of a a guess if you wish so I'm suggesting certain formula which is a guess I cannot really tell you how I derived it maybe I don't remember maybe I read it about somewhere when I when I was younger uh, but in any case, the formula is very simple. Here it is. F of, I'll put x of n equals x to the n. It's a simple formula. x is some kind of a parameter. n is uh, what it is. Now, why did I put it this way? Well, let's put it f of n plus f x of n plus 1 is it equal to f of x of n plus 2 question mark well let's just see x to the n plus x to the n plus 1 equal to x n plus 2 well here is a very interesting thing. What if for any particular n, let's say for n is equal to 0, it's true. So let's just assume that for x is equal to 0, it's true. x to 0 plus x1 is equal to x2. For example, now if I will multiply it by x, I will have x first plus x to the second equals to x to the third. And then if I will multiply it by any x to the nth, multiply by x to the nth, so what, what will I have? x to the n plus x to the n plus 1 is equal to x to the n plus 2, right? If I multiply it by x to the nth degree. So if I will find x which corresponds to this, which makes, which makes this identity, then this formula will be true for any other n right so all I need is to find X to satisfy this equation which is basically a quadratic equation by the way so if I will find X which satisfies this quadratic equation that X would be good enough for this to be true for any n okay so let's just do it it's a quadratic equation we can certainly solve this Let's put everything to the right, so I will have x squared minus x minus, uh, minus x, and x to the 0 is 1, so that's equal to 0. x equals 2, 2, uh, 1 plus minus square root 1 times a times c plus 4. So it's... Uh, 1 plus minus square root of, four, of 5 divided by 2. So I found two different values x1 and x2. x1 and 2. Okay, so I have not one, I have two different values of x which will make this identity for any n. Does it mean that I have found the formula for Fibonacci sequence? Well, not exactly. There are two other conditions. You see, f of 0 should be 0 and f of 1 should be 1. And obviously, if I will put 0 here, and x would be something like this, something like this, one of these, to the zeroth degree, that supposed supposed to be uh, one, right? Instead, instead of zero, I will have one. So that's not. It's good enough to satisfy this, but it's not good enough to satisfy that. Well, here 
we will do relatively simple thing. First of all, let me just try to plug this out. So I have x 1 2 equals 1 plus minus square root of 5 divided by 2. Okay, I found this. But I cannot say that this is the right formula for Fibonacci sequence because it satisfies only this for x one of these. So if x is one of these, then this formula will be satisfied, but, but not, not, not this. So, but let's do it differently now. So if my fx1 of n equals to x1 n satisfies the formula, uh, which means what? Which means x1 to the n plus x1 to the n plus 1 equals to x1 to the n plus 2. This is the correct formula, basically, for x1 is equal to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Now, similarly, x2 also satisfies this formula, which means that x2 to the n plus x2 to the n plus 1 is equal to x2 to the n plus 2, where x2 is 1 minus square root of 5. Fine. Now, now I will make a little trick, one another little trick. But again, that's something which definitely can be just analytically thinking about. If I know that this satisfies and this satisfies, what does it mean? Well, let's just multiply this by p and multiply this by q where p and q some parameters now if this is true then multiply by p would be also true for any p right and if i multiply this by q that would be true for any q which means that f x1 p of n is also a good function which delivers this and f x2 q which is so uh, f x1 p is this p times x1 to the nth degree and this is q times x2 to the nth degree so these functions are also satisfy this but not but not this obviously but p and q can be anything any real number basically well not equal to zero of course okay which means that if i will sum them up i will have yet another function let's call it f without any index of x uh, of n sorry p times x1 to the n plus q times x2 to the n. Now the question is, why did they do it? Because p and q can be anything. x1 is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. x2 is 1 minus square root, uh, square root of 5 over 2. I can actually think about certain parameters, p and q. Obviously, it satisfies the, the, the main uh, uh, equ equation, but I can find parameters p and q which would satisfy these also. So I have basically given myself a little freedom in the choice of function f. So first I found this function, I found another function, so at least two functions which satisfy this equation. Then I found the whole series of functions by multiplying by p or q, where p and q are different functions, uh, different re real numbers. So I have a lot of different functions which satisfy this, where p and q actually is any parameter. So I can find these parameters to satisfy these guys as well. And if I will, that would be basically it. That would be the end of the story. Okay, question is, 
how can I do it? Well, okay, let's just put this in the very beginning here. Okay, and now let's put my function f of n equals to um, p times uh, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n's plus q 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n's. Let me find p and q so I know for sure that this is satisfied. Okay, so why? Because if you just take 1 plus uh, uh, square root of 5 over 2 to the power of n, it satisfies, or minus, 1 minus, or any linear combination of them. But now I would like to put n is equal to 0 and find p and q because I know it's, the result should be 0. If I will put n is equal to 0, that would be p and this would be q, so p plus q equals to 0. And then I will put 1 and check that it's supposed to be 1. So p, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the first degree, plus q, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2, supposed to be equal to 1. Well, this is a system of two unknown p and q, linear system. And, well, let's just solve it, find p and q, and that would be it, all right? So how do we do it? Well, from here, q is equal to minus p. Substitute it into this. So I will, I will have p 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 minus p 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 equals to 1. So what will be 1 over 2 and minus 1 over 2? OK, so it will be. Uh, Okay, it will be p square root of 5 over 2, and minus and minus will be plus, so it will be p square root of 5 equals to 1. So p is equal 1 over square root of 5, and q is equal to minus 1 over square root of 5. Which means that my formula, which describes my Fibonacci sequence, instead of P and Q, I will have 1 over square root of 5 and minus 1 square root of 5. That's it. This is the formula. Now, Let's just check. If you will put 0, now to this 0's degree, power of 0 would be 1, so it will be 1 over 5, square root of 5, and 1 minus, uh, and, and minus 1 over square root of 5, that would be 0. Now, if you will put 1, let's just check. 1 over square root of 5, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, minus 1 over square root of 5, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So what will be that? Um, that would be 1 plus square root of 5 minus 1 minus, so it's plus square root of 5, divided by 2 square root of 5. 1 and 1, 2 square root of 5 divided by 2 square root of 5, that's 1. Great. I will do one more. Let's put square. So for n is equal to 2. Now n is equal to 0, 1, 2. So it's supposed to be 1 also. OK. Uh, 1 plus square root of 5 squared, that would be 1, plus 2 square root of 5 
plus and plus square root of 5 square which is 5 so it's 1 plus 5 it's 6 6 plus 2 square root of 5 divided by it would be 3 plus square root of 5 and 1 minus would be uh, 3 minus square root of 5 divided by square root of 5 is that right? So what it will be? Well, 3 and 3 will cancel out. Minus and minus would be 5. Uh, is something wrong? Oh, that's 4. Sorry. That would be 6 plus square root of 5 divided by 4. I have to square 2. So that would be 2 with the 3, three plus square root of 5 divided by 2 and 3 minus square root of 5 divided by 2. So that would be 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 2, right. So that's 2, so square root of 5 plus square root of 5 is 2 square root of 5 divided by, that's 1. That's good. Okay, should I do one more? Okay, one more. Next should be 2. Okay, so um, square, I know what it is, so that's 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 times 1 times square root of 5 divided by 2. That's 1 square, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the power of 3. Now, that would be uh, 1 over square root of 5 minus 1 over square root of 5 and here I will have 3 minus square root of 5 over 2 times 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 so that's the third power of 1 minus um, square root of 5 over 2 oh wow so that's 4 so the uh, denominator is 4 square root of 5 4 square root of 5. Now, in the numerator, 3 times 1 is 3, 5 times 5 is 5. So sum of them would be 8 minus uh, plus square and 3 and 4. So it's 4 square root of 5. Here, minus. Uh, again, that would be 3, uh, that would be 8. Now, minus 1 and minus that minus 4, but will be 4 square root of 5. So, 8, 8, 4 and 4 is 8, over 4 is 2. Okay, so it looks like the formula is working. So, our, well, not that I doubt it, because I knew the formula <laughs> it was correct. Um, so, what's interesting about the whole thing, this derivation. First of all, there was one really good guess that any function which looks like x to the power of n satisfies this particular thing if it satisfies for um, n is equal to zero. So from this, if I find x, which satisfies this, which is a square, uh, which is a quadratic equation, uh, then this formula would be satisfied for any n. Because you just multiply it by x to the power of n, x to the power of n, x to the power of n, and you will have x to the power of n plus x to the power of n plus 1 is equal to x to the power of n plus 2, right? When you multiply you add the uh, exponents. So that's, that's a guess. It's a good guess. So if you find the solution to this equation, then you find functions. The next thing is that we have to really satisfy two initial conditions. And from this function, you basically go to any function which is 
equals to uh, some coefficient times x to the n. And since you have two different values of x, x1 and x2, you have two different solutions for this, so you have two different um, uh, in, in initial uh, values for this particular function. And combining them together with some parameter p and q for x2, you can find these p and q to satisfy these two conditions. That's another kind of a creative thing. So two creative things. First, that you can use this function. If x satisfies this equation, then this is satisfied already. Then you're saying that, okay, multiply by any number, it will be also uh, the function which would satisfy this equation. And since I have two of them, I can combine them, linearly combine them, and find coefficients p and q to satisfy the two initial conditions. If you satisfy these two addition, in initial conditions and this formula, that's enough, basically, to recreate the whole sequence. So that's, that's the most important part of it. So, yes, you need some ingenuity, you need some creativity. And this is just one of the ways how to solve this particular problem. And again, it's all for training your mind. All right, so what I suggest you to do is uh, to read the notes for this lecture. Every lecture on unisor.com for any course, not only this one, has certain uh, description, which is basically like a textbook. In some cases, uh, if it's a problem, I, I, I give a solution. Sometimes I don't give a solution in the um, textual part, but I do give, like here, um, in, in the video part of the lecture. If it's a theoretical um, lecture, then I basically um, explain everything in writing exactly like it is in a good textbook. So, in this particular case, for theoretical material, you have an advantage of having the video and live person to explain it to, but at the same time, you can read the same material in the notes for this lecture. So, on the website of unisor.com, you have together, you have the notes and you have the video on the same screen, basically. So, you can watch the video and you can read the notes. Um, and, as I said, the site is totally free, so it's all for your knowledge. Um, just take it. That's it basically for today um, and I wish you good luck.